Does President Biden really want to be bipartisan? After his speech last night, he spoke to a number of Republicans on the House floor, including Senator Rob Portman. Just moments ago, I asked the senator what's going to happen to the economy with Biden's massive spending and tax hikes and free money from the Fed. Here's what he said. Well, Larry, you're the expert, but it's complicated. <laughs> I think what's going to happen is you're putting uh, pressure on the accelerator and the brake at the same time because the spending is a stimulus. The brakes are the tax cuts, and then the monetary policy, you know, adds to the uncertainty. I think what you end up with is an economy that will not be nearly as strong as it would have been because of the break and higher inflation uh, because of the monetary policy and also the increased fiscal spending at a time when the economy is likely to be overheated. So I, I worry about it. I, and it's going to happen probably over, over time. So you'll see better economic growth at first. But a year from now, uh, uh, I would worry about higher inflation. Yeah, I, I tend and, to. And higher interest rates. I tend to agree with all that. Um, You've got nominal GDP growing at 10%, so bond yields are going to have to go up. Let me just say, though, that the Wall Street Journal's lead editorial on President Biden's speech last night, they call it Biden's cradle-to-grave uh, government. And a lot of us, including myself, think that these new social welfare programs, new entitlements, uh, there's no work requirements, as you know. And this really derides or de degrades the dignity of work, does it not? Which is so essential to Americans, uh, to America's idea. Well, it is. And it's building on what's already happening. Uh, and you know, Larry, that there are employers all over the country now looking for workers. I'm told there are over 500,000 job openings in manufacturing alone. I hear it from every sector in Ohio, including the restaurant and hospitality sector. Uh, they're looking for workers. And so if you want to get a job today, uh, you can likely find one. The other issue we've got is skills training. We don't have people with the correct skills to fill some of these jobs. And that would be, a, a, I think, a very helpful thing for government to help on is to ensure we have people that can learn how to weld and drive a truck and, and do the hospital tech work and do the, do the technology work like coding. Those, those are the middle skill jobs that are needed. So I think there's kind of a disconnect with what the president is talking about and what the reality is. And we already have a disincentive to work out there, which is that the unemployment insurance is continuing uh, well beyond the time when the economy, uh, you know, would, would justify it. As an example, during the COVID-19 debate, we talked about ending the additional $300 federal supplement on top of the state unemployment um, early this summer. Democrats uh, defeated us on that and instead insisted that it continue until the fall. That's creating issues back home with employers who are eager to get folks back to work. So I do think it, uh, it provides a disincentive already, and these additional ideas, if there is not a work requirement connected with them, could have the same effect. Uh, your op-ed piece in the journal a couple of weeks ago, or 10 days ago, uh, you state uh, correctly, in, in my humble opinion, 70% of the Trump tax cuts flowed to the um, workforce, to the wage earners, to the blue-collar middle class. And you also say that workers will bear most of the burden of higher corporate tax rates now in the form of lower wages and lost jobs. Now, Mr. Biden last night, as you know, had a different view. He says these tax hikes are somehow going to create jobs and cause wages to rise. I, I don't get the logic. You're a cool-headed guy. You're a circumspect guy. Maybe you can help me on this. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. Uh, uh, as I added up, President Biden has now proposed about $6 trillion in new spending uh, since coming into office. The tax cuts in 2017 were just under $2 trillion of tax cuts. So, you know, even if you added all those tax cuts back, which would be a grave mistake given what's happened to our economy pre-COVID, uh, the tax cuts worked. In other words, it increased wages, lowest poverty rate uh, since we started keeping track of it. Uh, lowest unemployment ever for blacks, Hispanics. Uh, it was working, bringing people off the sidelines into work. 19 straight months of wage growth over 3% annualized as of February before COVID. So it was working. And now he wants to reverse that. Plus, he wants to add additional taxes because, again, the roughly $2 trillion in tax cuts does not pay for the $6 trillion in new spending. So it's going to hurt the economy. And the point I was making with regard to the 70% figure is that the Congressional Budget Office, which is a nonpartisan group up here on the Capitol, they said that the tax cuts on the corporate side were flowing primarily 70 percent to, to wages and benefits right. for workers. And it was reflected in, in the numbers. In other words, we did have wage increases for the first time really in a decade and a half in my home state of Ohio and elsewhere. So 
that's what we're giving up if we start taxing again. Also, America's competitive position. We heard a lot about that last night, that America needs to be more competitive. Well, the worst thing to do for competition is to saddle our workers with a tax code that does not let them compete on a level playing field. So I noticed last evening you had a brief exchange with the president as he was leaving. Uh, I'm not going to ask his specifics there because I wouldn't give them up either. But what's the plan here? In other words, he has this gargantuan package, uh, infrastructure and Green New Deal and social spending and, of course, tax hikes. Is this bundled into one package, Senator Portman? Is this going to be two, one reconciliation, two reconciliations? Or is there still a chance for bipartisanship? I didn't hear much bipartisanship from him last night, but you're a better judge of that. What do you think? Well, my, my strong uh, desire is that we take up infrastructure separately, and that's the right way to do it, Larry. As you know, this is about investing in infrastructure, which is different than new social programs. Uh, some of this infrastructure will last 50 or so years, and so you want to probably pay for it differently, including some bonding, including some user fees. So it doesn't make any sense to combine them. And unfortunately, what the president proposed as infrastructure was mostly not infrastructure. Only 20 percent of it could be defined as infrastructure, even using the most broad definition to include broadband, water infrastructure, transit, and so on. So my urging of the White House and my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is to say, let's come together with a bipartisan agreement on infrastructure. We can get there. You know, President Trump and, and you and your administration were promoting much the same idea. And by the way, it will be an unprecedented level of spending, even with the Republican proposal, mm -hmm. which is less than the Democrat proposal, of course. But infrastructure, fixing our roads and bridges, making our economy stronger over time, creating jobs, that's something that we can work with. So my hope is that they will pull that out of all the other stuff they're talking about and let us have a good bipartisan victory here for the American people. That may be a heavy lift, Senator. I mean, I hope you're right. And you're a very sound thinker. And you and I have been friends for a very long time. I just, I'm not hearing it from Team Biden, but I, I don't know. Maybe something's going to shift here. I, I think. Hope springs eternal, Larry. No, you're quite right, Rob. And you know yeah. what? My mantra has been if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As you described, this economy is booming with lower Absolutely. taxes and fewer regs and uh, energy Absolutely. independence. Why yep. go through this? It's all ideological. Anyway, you're yep. uh, great to come on this show. I appreciate it so much, Senator Rob Portman. Thanks, Larry. See you soon. Always great to be on with you. Take care. Thanks.